Hi, welcome back to the Cena Show. Thursday. Tonight's guest is Jeff Richardson, who's a Navy chief, musician, and strongman. And uh, yes, how's everyone doing? What's up? I see ya. I see ya. And I know ya. What's up, Chief? That's it. That's Yes. Hey, how's it going? How you doing, Chief? What's going on? It's another uh, Thursday night. Just, uh, I don't know, living the dream. Uh, the kiddos uh, was a little bit sick today. Um, you know, coming off of having duty last night. So no sleep. Uh, and because of that, like, I made sure there's plenty of light shining on my face. <laughs> and the, like, the puffy lack, you know, like sleep deprivation. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You just keep, keep the momentum going, huh? That's all you can do. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, I mean, that's kind of, kind of what I do. Like just, you know, just roll with it and, and keep on going. So, yeah, well, thank I, you for having me on the show. I, yeah, I, I was shocked that you invited me. I was like, oh, okay. I don't think I'm actually that interesting. <laughs> well, you started telling me some of your story, and, and we were, like, during work, right? So I was like, otherwise I would sit down and talk to you for, like, at least a few hours. We didn't have that necessarily. So here we are, you know? Yeah. I love your shirt, by the way. Very cool shirt. Yeah. Thank you. I'm uh, – I'm, one of those people who uh, is a fan of Halloween stuff all year round. Um, I, I go pretty hard on Halloween decorations. Did did the whole custom like tombstone setup, you know, made out of foam that took me forever. And, you know, it was like the one Pinterest win that I ever had. So I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> well, your daughter must love that. Kids love Halloween, right? Oh yeah. Oh, you know, she, she changes uh, what she's going to wear three, four times. She's, starts picking it out months in advance, just like, oh, I want to do this for Halloween. Um, but I don't know, I, I think doing, celebrating every holiday is just fun. You know, um, we, we definitely have a uh, kind of an attitude in our family of just like celebrate life. Um, so no matter what the occasion is, you know, it's, it's Friday or it's a Monday, like let's do something cool, you know? Um, and so yeah, we, we do stuff like that all the time. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So you and I met during Fleet Week, which is a few weeks ago now. Um, we had an amazing time. We had a, a crew of, what, like 12 people. Yeah, about that. Yeah. Um, it was definitely an experience. I've never been to New York Fleet Week before. And uh, I, I, I've got to tell you, like, my wife gives me, she talks trash to me all the time and has been for a while. Because, I, you know, I grew up out in the country uh, it, like in rural Michigan, um, you know, surrounded by farmland and everything. And like the big city scares me. I was just like, oh my gosh, New York. Like, like, you, granted, you, know, you looked very comfortable. You know, fake it till you make it. Right. You know, and so like coming into New York, I, I was definitely like anxious um, on like how to get around and, you know, everything just seemed so complicated to me. And, uh, but then it was like, once I was there, I was just like, actually, this is not too hard at all. Like, this is like, yeah, we, we can definitely do a weekender here, you know, sometime, which, you know, she's been bugging me about for, for a while. Um, so yeah, I was, uh, you know, came to New York first time we did flee week together, had a great time. Definitely, uh, the, the work hard, play hard, uh, mentality, you know, from going to 18 hour days, you know, just working and working and working to to accomplish something that we've never really done before from from a public affairs angle um to you know blowing off steam doing karaoke and <laughs> you know going going out and getting some good food and, and and visiting some historic places so it was it was awesome and i you know i just want to thank you for being such a awesome new york host uh, yeah. for all of us uh first time new yorker like visitors no problem. And you got to come back because there's still so much more, you know? What, what do you mean? Like, the, I didn't experience all of New York in the two times yeah. that I went out? <laughs> I know, but you know, like we, did, we 
did do a lot in those in the little sleep we had, but there's just you know. There's always next to you. We'll manifest. Like, I, I didn't even see the Statue of Liberty while I was there. <laughs> no, but, you know, which is one of the quintessential, like, touristy things to do. But next time. Next time. We manifest. Yeah. So Absolutely. when you were, we're just going to jump in because I could, I know I could talk to you all day and I'll know I'll cut us off at the end. When you were younger, did you know you wanted to be in the military play music, fitness, any, any and all of the things that we are here to talk about? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I think so. When I was a kid, like, I grew up with, um, my dad was a huge uh, Tom Clancy novel fan. And so, like, I think I get my love of reading from him um, because he was, always, he was always reading a book. And to this day, like, I, I almost can never fall asleep. Um, without reading. And so, you know, I grew up around, like, again, you know, country kind of life, uh, like growing up shooting guns, like out in the field. And, um, you know, the military was always, it's like what was on TV, you know, and the, you know, the uh, idealized, um, like polished nature of just like, be all you can be and serve your country and like, and do all that. And, and so from er, an early age, I always thought like, oh, I'm definitely, I'm going to be a Navy SEAL when I grow up, like for sure, you know, <laughs> no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, and then I drifted away from that for, uh, for a long time. And when I got into music, um, uh, I, as much as growing up out in the country was kind of cool, like I, I hated it in a lot of ways. And um there was there was a defining moment in my youth when um for my uh i was in sixth grade i, I remember that i i can't remember how old i was turning because i don't know yet but um my uncle for my birthday got me uh two albums that like changed my world and that was um a uk release of uh the clash uh one of their albums i think it was uh, london london burning and um, nice. a Bob Marley uh, live album. And that was wow. just uh, Good stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, um, getting, you know, that really kind of paved the way for me to get into, like, um, like a lot of more of the, like, punk rock and ska, you know, scene. And just, you know, from, from then on, like, I was, I was all about listening to punk rock you know, hardcore, uh, reggae, ska music, like everything that is, uh, you know, counterculture in, in a sense. And I definitely turned away from uh, wanting to be in the military, uh, you know, throughout my teen years uh, for, you know, for a good while. Um, and eventually, like, um, I, I found myself needing uh, a little more direction um, I found myself just sitting in college thinking like, man, what am I doing? Like I'm, I have, like, I'm going to college for things, I, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't really know what I want to do when I grow up. Um, and at that point, the, the war in Afghanistan, uh, this is, you know, 2006, 2000, early 2007, like was going pretty, you know, pretty, hot and heavy over there and I just thought like man like what am I doing like I'm not doing anything and so I left class like I just got up and left class and went and talked to a recruiter um, went and talked to the Navy and because uh, my grandfather was in the Navy he uh, served in uh, submarines during the Korean War as an electrician so wow. I have a little bit of Navy heritage uh, you know a tiny bit but it was um I kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps a, a little bit. So I, I dropped out of college and I joined the Navy at 20 years old to, uh, you know, kind of find a little direction. So it was, it was kind of like coming around full circle. Um, you know, I still, I still love uh, punk rock, ska and reggae music and everything. And if I didn't have this receding hairline once I'm out of the Navy, I would, I would bring back the Mohawk. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> with a force, but unfortunately, genetics have seen to, uh, you know, throw a wrench into that plan. 
Well, you could put a wig on or something, you know. Yeah, that would look good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I I have embraced the 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 bald life. You know, it, it's okay. I, this is about as long as I like it, actually. Um, you know, it's and, more metal, but, right? I think. No, I mean, I start to look like a chi at that. You know, it's, you know, I walk around, people are like chi chi chi. Yeah, like, okay, yeah, I need a haircut. All right. Just down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, when when did you start doing the strongman stuff in your youth? That uh, do you remember? So when I was a kid, I would always watch um the World's Strongest Man show with my dad. And these guys were like superheroes to me. Um, you know, just being able to lift a refrigerator and, on your back and run with it and like, do, lift, like lift these stones and everything like that. And it was such a just like awe inspiring thing in me. And, um, you know, I, as a kid, you try to do that stuff and you know, you can't because you're, you're super weak, but you know, it got me into, um, not, not really weightlifting and working out, but it was like, it was like an early childhood passion of just like, this is an amazing thing. Like I, I remember like sitting down like as a family to watch these amazing feats of strength and it like I was just floored by it. So fast forward um, a while, you know, um, in the Navy, you know, we, we try to keep a culture of fitness um, just like any military branch, uh, you know, would. And so I always kind of did the, you know, the cardio and the, the, um, you know, when people don't really work out with a plan, it's you, you just kind of um, gravitate to just a bodybuilding type of thing. Like you always hit the biceps, right? You know, you you got to hit the bench, but like not really understanding, like unless you the risk versus reward for bench press is like unless you're doing powerlifting, like it's really not great. Right? There's better exercises to build. You, uh, a strong chest and a big chest as opposed to the bench like there's better exercises but that's what you do because that's what's you know eh, just hit the gym right you know um and I, you know i always kind of did that and just trying to stay in shape and everything and then the youtube algorithm you know man that 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 caught me one day and um i saw a video of brian shaw who is a four-time world's strongest man and he had a youtube channel and I was just like, oh, like, yeah, I, I remember watching Strongman when I was a kid. Like, that's that's really cool. Like, I, I completely forgot about this thing. And it was such a, like, a nostalgic throwback um, that, like, I just started binging, binge watching. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I should start deadlifting. And I didn't know what I was doing, you know. Uh, and, and you try to look up videos and everything. And like, okay, you know, I'm going to try to run this program that I found online and you know just starting to get into it and just generally doing more weight training because I you know I think there's actually so many health benefits for it um, but it wasn't until 2019 when I realized that there's actually weight classes and you don't have to be you know, six foot seven and, you know, 400 pounds um, to compete in strongman. Like you, you can compete at the amateur and the, like, like there's an amateur and, and just like open class and, a, and at pro level um, at, at the very, at varying weight classes. And so I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh yes, I, this is something I have to do because it's it's like a dream come true almost, you know. Wow. Uh, I'll never be able to, you know, deadlift a thousand pounds. You know, I'm just my five foot six genetics again. <laughs> I, the genetics they they get you every time. But <laughs> sure. um, but but it was something that I could just be I could I could actually physically grab onto and do, and it, it completely changed the way I train. Um, you know. So I, I think a lot of people um, struggle sometimes when they're getting into fitness um, or, or trying to stay consistent um, with workouts and everything like that. Um, and I, I, th I think that's a common thing, but 
when you have a purpose and a goal uh, for what you want to do, um, th like there was almost no excuse that would make me skip the gym, you know, because like I have, I have this goal that I want to accomplish. Um, right. Workouts and, you know, whatever it is, um, if, if you have a strong goal, um, you know, sitting on the couch is not as nearly as appealing. Like you get up and you're like, I, I, I need to get this done today because I want it, you know? Right. So that's kind of how I got into like strong man. We have a question if you, you want to try to answer. Sure. Uh, sure. Rodriguez Lopez, who's also a BM2 in the Navy, says, what are the best, best advice? What's the best advice you could give to someone that is trying to get into lifting? Like what kind of assessments should we do to identify what exercises are best for us? So I, in my opinion, and taken with a grain of salt, I'm not, uh, full disclosure, I'm not a professional trainer. Uh, I don't hold training certifications or anything like that, uh, you know, but I, I studied it uh, for a long time uh, and, and have been lifting for a little bit. Um, and I would say uh, the major barbell exercises are, are going to be your bread and butter. Um, squ the squat is one of the best full body movements um, for strength. Uh, that is, is awesome. Um, if you want to get into it, I would say the best thing you can do is um, if, if you can, if you have the ability to start out, uh, you know, find somebody to, um, to give you, a little bit of coaching to make sure your technique is on point and then just carry on with that technique. Um, a lot of times, uh, and I'm guilty of it of myself in the past. Um, we want to ego lift and, you know, just to show off in front of the people at the gym, um, you know, and show like, Oh, you know, I'm, I have a program that I'm following, but you know, like I, I, I want to do this to try to impress the people around me. And mm. Yeah. I, would, I would say to like stay away from that as much as you can. No one cares what anybody's doing in the gym other than themselves, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and so take it, um, you know, learn the movement, um, practice that movement, then load that movement. Um, I, I think it would be a, a good kind of, you know, and then, and then progress that load um, if that makes sense. So if you're starting out, you know, with just, an empty barbell, um, doing a squat, like look, look on YouTube. Cause I mean, that's, there's a lot of great videos to show you how to set up, um, you know, into a squat stance or to deadlift or to, um, to press overhead. Um, so get, get technique down. Um, and then just, um, practice good and proper form. Um, don't, and, and listen to your body. You know, you, you don't want to be hurt and blow out something because you, you you didn't listen or you tried to ego lift or, you know, something in the gym. I know a lot of people with a lot of injuries, you know, because of that. And because I started lifting a, a little bit later in life, um, you know, lifting heavier, I, I, I guess you say. I always kind of, like I said, I did the, hey, let me, like, toss some, you know, dumbbells around or, you know, like hit the bench press. Um, but I was never really lifting any any serious type of weight and so now that i've come and i'm a little bit older i'm 35 now um i would say i i approach it with a much more cautious uh you know mindset because you know i'm not getting any younger you know when you're when you're young you know you're made out of rubber and uh i i want to be i want to be lifting when i'm 80 you know plain and simple um, <laughs> wow I have a role model at the gym uh, or one of the gyms that I go to uh, and it's this little old man and he is, he's got to be like 85 and he like, I think he works at the gym. Maybe like he's always just there, like wiping down equipment, just like, you know, yelling at people like to, you know, uh, put their weights away and, you know, so he may work there or may, may he just love being there. And I see him still like get under the squat rack at 85 years old. And he's not, he's not lifting much, but he's staying in shape. You know, <laughs> and I think that's kind of a dream for me. Like I have some, some numbers that I want to hit before I, you know, you know, kind of just maintain. Um, 
but you know, I want to be lifting into into my eighties uh, for sure. And I and I think so. Going back to the that question, you know, learning learning the basic barbell movements, um, learning proper technique and putting technique over over your ego um, and progressing it slowly um, is is probably the key to to getting into it. She says, thank you, and you're super young. I'm 35, too, she said. <laughs> <laughs> so so how, how much weight can you lift, Chief? I know you told me. I forgot, though. I mean, so I everything is relative, right? Um, right. So I, I don't think it's that much. Um, like, and I... I you know, again, everything's everything's relative. Um, the, the most I've squatted was uh, three seventy five. Um, so three hundred seventy five pounds on the bar, and then a one a one rep uh, squat. Uh, I deadlifted three eighty five, um, and I have benched probably close to two twenty. But I, I so I don't really bench. So that's that. You know, those are the three things that people kind of go off of um but in strongman there's no bench press so i i don't really train that um if, if that makes sense like i do more incline press i do much more overhead press um i've done a, a 200 pound log uh overhead which is uh, like you know i think it's really cool um so but i've only been i've only started like serious barbell lifting and and that progression i think i've been doing it for about three and a half years now um so i'm still in my infancy you know but i i'd like to um and th those so those numbers are circa 2021 um and this is another thing when you uh you know when you start lifting um you don't need to max out all the time you should only be like testing your true max or unless in a competition right uh, otherwise you should do like a three rep max because the the risk of versus reward of doing like a true like maximum amount of weight for a lift like there is an in, a definite increase of risk of injury um so unless you are competing i i, I don't think there's or you have a goal, like I, I don't think there's any real reason to to uh, try to max out um, that way. But uh, you know, that's that's one uh, you know one other tip. What what is a goal weight you're trying to lift or get to? So uh, I want to um, I want to squat 500 pounds uh, and deadlift 500 pounds, and uh, which for uh, for my weight and height and everything that like that's pretty significant um, uh, that's a pretty significant amount of weight um, yeah there's I mean, a lot even what you do now is but in your but your studies show you that right <laughs> yeah like for I me, mean, again, so, again everything is relative you right, know right, 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 right. so I don't think I'm that strong but I like I understand that um, the 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 weight that I can lift is is strong to a lot of other people, um, so I think I think having that rel like that relativity goal is is an important thing, um, and, and understanding where you're at because it it allows you to like like I I will never rest on my laurels you know <laughs> like I I always want to be working. And so, like, I have a goal, I'm working towards it, and it's not a goal that is going to be, um, come to fruition next year, for sure. Like, that that goal, because it's such a, um, it's such a high goal, um, I think I'm probably, I'll, maybe three or four years is when I would realistically slowly, right. I don't want to like shoot up there. Um, I want to slow, slowly progress to that point. Um, Cause that's the safest way to do it. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not going at five foot six. I'm never going to be a professional strong man that like, that is not ever going to happen. That's not ever how I'm going to make my money. Um, 
So it's it's something that's fun for me. I can it gets me into training. Um, I can I I enjoy it a lot more. Um, just having that goal, and uh, I don't know. So I also want to pick up uh, and press a, a two hundred fifty pound ball. Like that would be that would be cool. <laughs> Well, I, I know you can do whatever you put your mind to, too. Me too. <laughs> thanks, though. I, I thanks know, for being you, would, you would be a great firefighter. I know that much. I know, I actually considered going into uh, being a firefighter at one point. but uh, yeah, You just did everything more. else. <laughs> no, no. I mean, that was kind of at that point where I was in college, and I was like, man, what do I – what could I do? Like, um, I think – Service to others is uh, has always been an important thing to me. So, like, I considered being a firefighter or a policeman, or you know, doing doing something like uh, maybe do, being a medic or or something like that. And I chose the the highest form of service to the public, which is public relations. <laughs> 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 Not really, but you know, I, here we are. <laughs> Are you putting the message through, right? Isn't that what it's all about? Sure. <laughs> so let's talk music. Sure. So what kind of music do you like to play? And what instruments do you play in order if you play more than one? Um, okay. So I, um, I've grown out of the, like, I only listen to punk rock, you know, type of type of thing um i listen to a lot of stuff everything from oh man um everything from bluegrass to to like bluegrass folk i love pop dua lipa has been my jam uh lately like love love, I love her. Dua lipa, you know um okay. uh you know i still listen to ska you know reggae punk rock you know uh all that stuff um Folk punk, uh, I guess, is probably uh, what I play most often, um, you know, when I'm writing a song. Um, but, yeah, so as far as instruments, uh, I think you can kind of see behind me. Um, I have a drum set, and then over here, like, I have a few instruments. Um, I play the uh, uh, guitar, uh, the bass guitar, Drums, uh, mandolin, uh, ukulele, um, the banjo, the the oud, which is a uh, Middle Eastern instrument and uh, cousin to the guitar. Um, and what else? I think there's something else. I can't remember. I play a lot of stuff, uh, and I also sing. Um, I, I'm not good at all those things, but it again, it's it's. I think the pursuit of music is has always also been a passion of mine, um, and a lot of it comes from you know uh, the family. Like my dad was a huge influence on me. He he was a musician, um, you know, way back in the day. And then uh, you know, I'm the second oldest of five kids, and diapers are expensive, and he ended up selling you know the the musical equipment and got into it later on when. Um, you know, when I got into it and wanted to play music. So would you want to play a little something for us, maybe? I can. So uh, I have a song, and, and I am super rusty, so if I screw this all up, um, I'm not sorry, because, you know, <laughs> uh, I, again, it's, it's all about just, like, having fun, right? So I have, I have a song that I think you would like. Um, and it's called the bosun's pipe, okay? So I, I don't write like Navy and like God bless America, you know, stuff. Like I really don't do do that. But sometimes when when I'm doing songwriting, um, it just kind of flows. And I, I kind of feel like this song captured that, uh, that element of being underway um, for, it's gonna be hard to understand for people if they're not in the Navy, it's it's a very like Navy lingo kind of song, but um, you know, I'll I'll explain anything if, if there's any questions. Let me see if I Okay. I'm gonna just get off screen while you do that. 
Okay. All right, no worries. I'm right here. I'm right here. Oh, okay. you can you can look at me. That doesn't bother me. That's just, that's just so. what I do. Is that coming through all right? <laughs> Every night at sea, I look for the brightest star. Measure celestial bodies to tell you where you are. But I know where I am and I hate where I gotta go. Six more months at sea until I turn to a Every day at sea is a life in a paradox. Time is measured in 12 on and 12 off. Start the countdown until we hit a port. Go ashore, black out, and stumble back aboard. Sound the pipe, it's reveille. It tries to rack, it's another day at sea. Yeah, on my last night in port, I looked for the furthest bar. Away from the planks, I own hobbit out in a motor car. I let my troubles wash up on whiskey rocks, then stumble back and forth before we pull up chops. From the fantail, I watch as we depart. Way hanging up, she rises, the light drives out the dark. From the bridge, the captain watches on the set. BM3 hit the one MC, kind of play song for them. Please sound the pipe, it's reveille. It tries to act, it's another day at sea. Yeah, you're out. You're out. And it's been years since I left the place I once called home To sail across the whole damn world Get tattooed and make a life of my own I shed my tears, I faced my fears I've held fast when it counts So raise a glass for an old shipmate Who's finally made it out? From the brow, they watch as I salute. Permission to go ashore, it's the last time I'll see you. I have come and gone, my contract time is done. Shipmates, fare thee well, it's time that I have gone. From the shoreline, I watch them sail away. That boat's pipe still haunts me to this day. They took my blood and sweat and all I had to give. But I'll take the memories of those that I fled with. So sound the pipe, it's reveille. It tries to rack since another day at sea. Yeah, it comes. It comes. Wow. <laughs> I love that. That's that's for all boat people, you know? Yeah, uh, thanks. It, you know, it was just, I didn't, it was one of those things where, like, I didn't try to write it. It just kind of, over the course of time, just kind of worked its way out. And I, as I penned it down, and uh, I actually played it a lot faster um, than I'm, I'm used to playing it. Like, I don't know. That, I, got, I got a bad habit of that. Like, if, if I ever I were to record it, I need to play it with a metronome because, you know, it's, you know, starts out like... And unless I'm listening to something with time, it ends up being like... <laughs> you know, like super fast. And I don't know. That's, that was awesome. That, you wrote that whole song? That's so yeah, good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so you're a writer, too. You're all, th you're all the things. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I do songwriting. Um, I've got uh, like all like all writers. I have the great book in in my head that I'll write one day. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you'll love it when it comes out. 
you know, it's, it's, it's all up there, you know. I said that to my, my friend says that. I said, when are you going to do it? I have to write it down. It doesn't stay here, you know what I mean? So I, I was working on a book, um, and I was probably 50 or so pages in, and uh, it was when I was stationed in Greece, and I was working on it, and uh, my lap, my, it was, I had it on my laptop, backed up on my uh, other laptop at the time. I had, like, a, um, uh, I had found myself with two laptops, but, but, um, my apartment got broken into on New Year's Eve, and they stole, it was like a smash and grab, they stole my uh, uh, laptops, um, like my crappy watches that I had on my dresser, and like flipped the bed looking for money, and like that was it, and I, I've not, like it was such a heartache that I have not been able to like, write them since. I, I have um, a small draft of like a few pages that I sent to a friend for, like, a review way back when and it's just like one day one day i'll pick it back up again when i'm not oh. so busy, which i'm always busy i'm always doing something <laughs> yes it sounds like it well you're a you're a dad and a husband yeah. and a family man right yeah yeah um yeah i got got the wife and kiddo and you know doing that dad thing uh you know is uh i would say it's taken me off social media a lot um, because I'm very cognizant of the, like, kids look at everything, right? You know, they, they absorb everything. And I, whenever we go to, like, swimming practice, like, I do the best that I can to just leave my phone in my pocket and just be there in the moment. And, like, I try to do that with, um, with a lot of stuff. And I post stuff on social media here and there, but the... I feel like sometimes people get too trapped into it. Um, and, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, so every, everything for a reason for balance, like it's, it's okay. But um, for me, it's, it's like, I, I want to be like mindfully present. Like right. when I'm with my, with my daughter, you know, when I'm with my family, um, like I, I try to, make an effort and just be like, okay, I'm like, I'm here, you know, it, it's not like a constant always thing, you know, everybody's on their phone um, right. in there, but um, you know, and my daughter and I play video games together, you know, she's at that age now where like we're playing Zelda, you know, that's, <laughs> that's, awesome. that's cool. Good game. Good game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Then she teaches you Dua Lipa. You said, I love that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing, like, um, the pop music, uh, I, I'll i listen to it here and there, but um, one of the things that I do with my daughter, uh, almost every Saturday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, could be Friday night, we might do it tomorrow, uh, you know, we'll see, is uh, we have a dance party. Um, I love having dance parties with my daughter, and she loves dancing, she loves music, like, we do it down there, we turn off uh, the lights, and I have like one of those little like uh, strobe lights and I, you know, put music on and, and we dance, we play freeze tag, we play like floor is lava. We, we just, we just have fun. And, um, you know, I put on, I try to expose her to like fun and awesome music. Um, everything from, uh, you know, stuff that I like to listen to, um, which she, she'll be like, yeah, why are these, why are these people yelling so much? Like, they're so yeah. angry. Turn it off. I don't like it. Like, <laughs> fine. I guess you don't like no effects. Like, no, no, no effects. <laughs> you know, my, my daughter doesn't appreciate rancid. You know, that's, that's okay. You know. Um, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, I mean, you know, I feel like as much as you try to force kids into stuff, they will just push the other direction. Um, you know, or as much as you try to expose them to something, you know, that's, that's really all you can do is try to, like, um, expose them to the world in, in a safe and, like, uh, in, like interesting way. Because you're not going to, like, people are who they are. You know, you're not going to change somebody fundamentally unless you give them a clash 
uh, album and a Bob Mar Marley live album. Like, other, than that, other than that, you're not going to change who they are. <laughs> you know, people will grow up to um, to who they're going to be. Our experiences craft and mold us into who we are. Uh, absolutely. But um, what is your daughter's name? Gabriella. So when she starts singing, we'll look out for her. She does. Um, so we wrote a song together. Um, and she she absolutely gets up on the mic. And we wrote a punk song together. Um, uh, let me... <laughs> if, you go, uh, if you go on my Instagram, um, there is a video of us playing it together. And I'm on the electric guitar. And she's... Um, <laughs> she's singing. So it's like... Uh, I want to rock, I want to roll, I want to get out of control, let's go. <laughs> I don't care what you say, I'm going to do it my own way. Yeah. Let's rock. Let's roll. And like, that's it, you know? It's <laughs> but, cute, yeah. I saw it. She's very cute. Yeah, she um, she'll just get up on the mic sometimes and sing whatever. She'll get she'll pop up on the drums and start bashing some stuff out. Um, and like I'll try to play along with her and everything like that. And uh, she she has a, a ukulele that's like hers. Um, she doesn't she doesn't really play it much. But again, like it that. Um, if she wants to, it's there. She's exposed to music. She's exposed to playing music. She's exposed to um, like lots of fitness stuff. My my wife is a uh, 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 big into like body weight, you know, fitness. Um, our, we our treadmill recently died, but you know, she used to run 10k every other day. Um, you know, uh, so she's she works out, and does body weight exercises, and now. I just for uh for her birthday I got her um you know a barbell and, and some some weights and so now I got her deadlifting. <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah, so like we we're always staying active. My daughter does swimming lessons, like um, you know, she loves being outside and running around and I you know, whatever whatever she wants to do, like we try to figure out a way to make it work without overloading her because you know again you know some parents i, I feel like um put too much pressure on the kid to be the next like tiger woods or you know whatever it's like let it happen right you know exactly like um if uh if, if my daughter never becomes a musician um you know i, I would have a tiny tear but like i would be okay with it. she's and already I'm a musician too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's true i, I would I, more like, you know, um, I don't know. She's, she's musician almost, in training. A yeah, musician in training. <laughs> she, she's almost six years old, so, like, it's a little too early to tell. Um, you know, so, you know, we'll see. We try to do the best we can. Yeah, we just have fun. <laughs> That's what it is. So what do you do in your civilian, and is that an, is part of the MC in the Navy? Too? And what's an MC for people who don't know? So uh, my my job in the Navy is I'm a mass communication specialist, um, and basically what that does uh, in in the Navy is we're kind of like public relations, um, but much more on the um, on the hands on technical side of we write um, stories. So we we do journalism, we do photography, videography, graphic design, print production. Um, social media, uh, you know, we, we do all of those things in, in line with a communications plan. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I do. Uh, I'm, I'm active duty. So my day to day job is I'm actually an instructor at, um, at the defense information school, uh, which is where all the services, uh, the army, Marines, Navy, Coast Guard, um, you know, States force. I guess uh, we haven't had any yet, but uh, we're we're all the services um, send their uh, people when they first join um, and they want to go do that job. Then everyone goes to that school. So um, I teach all the services 
Uh, I have an instructor team and uh, yeah, my day to day job is, is, you know, being, uh, being a teacher essentially. That's awesome. I love that. You know, I, you know, I love that. Um, <laughs> so I, I ask, oh, I want to talk more about it later. We'll talk, but I ask my guests to bring a deep quote and or enlightenment experience to share. If you have one you have brought. So, um, it was kind of an experience that, uh, mm -hmm. kind of an experience that I would say was, was formative in my, uh, a little more towards my later, um, years when I was the ripe old age of, uh, 22. And, um, I had deployed to Afghanistan. Uh, I was embedded with the Army Infantry, um, the, the 48th Infantry, and just going out on, on missions and doing, doing lots of, uh, you know, kind of cowboy stuff uh, out there. You know, when, when you're 22 and don't have a family, like, you may live a little recklessly sometimes. And, uh, you know, there came a point where – like i was i was never in combat but you know our our base would get attacked on a, on a regular basis um i went on uh over two over 200 times in the year i went outside of the base on on convoys on on missions and helos like i i went all over like and i thankfully like nothing ever happened to me um but i i do know people that didn't make it back and the something that really kind of stuck with me um, is I remember thinking to myself, like, if I, if I make it back from this, like I will do my absolute best not to sweat the small stuff and just say no worries. And that's kind of been like almost my, a catchphrase um, that I have when stuff is going wrong. It's just like, no worries. Like there's, I, I have a bigger picture, like a bigger scope, and I've had like put things put forcefully into perspective of what's important, and that's it drives my wife crazy sometimes because like nothing ever bothers me. She's like, You're right, like you you have all these things to do, like you like how how can you be so relaxed? And I'm you know I'm just like eh, you know I'm, I'm gonna work. <laughs> It, it, and it will, and it does, doesn't it? You know, I mean, you um, have to go through being human, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's 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 one of those. Um, it was just kind of like a defining moment of my life. Like I, I choose, I will choose to live this way, um, because it's it's what's important, and I will prioritize, um, you know, what's important to me, because all the little things like I've seen in the end don't matter, right? It's, it's that big picture stuff. And, and I, you know, I believe that life is what, like the meaning of life is what we give it um, and what we put into it. And so I want to have a, a meaningful life um, and I want to be a part of like people's lives around me, right? And I can, I can only do, I can only do that by, by being present, by being invested, not sweating the small stuff and just like, no worries, man. Like, let's, it's, it's no big deal. Like we'll figure it out. Um, because you know, there's worse places to be and this is not ultimately, uh, that stressful of a situation in context. So that's really try like how I, I live my life, you know, it, to the best of my ability. Yeah. And you had to learn that so young, like that really shaped your whole future, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I coming back, um, after that, it was, in a sense, it was hard to relate to other, like, 22-year-olds, 23-year-olds, like, um, people my age. It was, um, it, you know, I dealt with post-traumatic stress after, um, and it was just one of those things where it's, like, again, our experiences, like, mold and change us in, in various ways, and, um, you know, that was uh, an experience like spending a year in country there. Um, you spend a year anywhere and it's going to influence who you are, right? That's a, that's a long time, um, you know, anywhere. 
And to do that, I think in a war zone, um, you know, we'll, it's, it's going to leave some sort of influence. Um, and, and there's, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, think about the people in the army and the Marines um, who, who do multiple deployments, you know, that is their job, you know, back to back to back. Um, you know, one, one of our, uh, my, one, my wife's uh, friend, um, he was Army Special Forces and he did like, nine, 10 tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, through his career. It's just like, you know, you, when you spend, uh, and, and, and in other situations, like I know people in the Navy, submariners who's in their career have spent uh, over 10 years underwater. Oh like, my God. <laughs> you know, our experiences, they, they shape us. And I, I think um, if we are, you know, have that, that presence and, and, and take time to reflect on them. Um, you know, we can learn a lot about ourselves and, and what's important in our lives. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm not sure where I'm going with this, uh, you know, I think, <laughs> but it, I think it just goes back to, um, you know, trying to build that understanding under like putting life into perspective um, is, is really important. Yeah, that thank you. Thank you for sharing that and I'm I'm happy that you've um reflected on that experience and have come to these conclusions cuz some people get lost in that and then go down bad roads, you know, but it looks like you've chosen the light side. So congratulations. Um how how do you stay motivated just more modern uh currently? How do you stay motivated and um yeah, because, you know, everything like COVID was very difficult. You had a kid and and I guess being in fitness helps, you know. So I, I, I think I stay motivated by, by reflection, um, by taking time and, and figuring out what's important. Um, and whenever I feel like unmotivated, um, I, I put, I weigh things, right? Uh, I'm, I'm super busy all the time. Um, at work I have, uh, I'm an instructor. I have an instructor team, but I also have like a lot of collateral duties, um, where I'm the, uh, the equal opportunity, uh, rep for the entire school. Um, so I'm in charge of, uh, essentially making sure like, we put on observations for like Pride Month and a Black History Month and Women's uh, Women's Equality Day and like uh, I'm I'm the push button for the uh, the commandant of the school like this this is happening and you know I'm I'm that uh, I'm I'm also in charge of the Sailor 360 program which is a, a training program uh, to where we can develop and mentor sailors. Um, yeah, I'm I'm the service chief in my department, so like all the awards and evals and everything kind of just like funnel through me to go up. Like I'm always busy at work, and then I have these workout goals uh, and strongman goals that I want to accomplish. And it like workouts take time. Like like uh, to get a normal good workout in is going to be like hour and a half, like close to two hours, and I can't always do that. Um, so I, I, I have to prioritize and compartmentalize and then like, I want, and then I'm uh, a musician, right? I want to play music and I want to practice music and I, I want to songwrite. Um, and I'm also, wait, I'm, a, I'm also a dad. You know, <laughs> and, a husband. and I, so like, I have all these things going on in my life. Um, and I think naturally I'm, uh, I'm an energetic person. Um, but I, I, I can be lazy just like everybody else. And I think, Oftentimes, when I find myself um, unmotivated, uh, you know, I ask the question like to myself, like, um, what is more important to me? Like, you know, sitting on the couch and playing video games or like getting a workout in? Um, and sometimes, you know, it is sitting on the couch and playing video <laughs> yeah. games because rest we all need time important. to, yeah, we all need time to, to rest and de decompress. And sometimes, like, uh, I, I just want to sit and chill and, and we all need that. And that's important. Um, so prioritizing and balancing that, you know, those aspects of life is, is, um, 
important. And I think by reflection, coming back around by reflection, when you, when you understand these things about yourself, when you have, when you like write out what, what is important to you, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? Um, it, it helps you stay motivated because you want to do it. It's the things that you want to do and accomplish. Um, and so automatically they're gonna, like, those are just way more in, in your mind than anything else. That's true. That's, that's what drives us. Right. It's like, yeah. as you were saying, like with like trying to control kids, you can't, they have ideas about their future. They envision it. They don't, we don't even control it. No one controls. We are just vessels, right? That's how I see it. And it, it be, signals are coming through us. We have choice which direction to take it. But I didn't, who chooses to be an artist? You know what I'm saying? Like, really? <laughs> you know, financially, financially. The, the, <laughs> you know, not, not very many people. The, the art life chooses them, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And, it, and, and math cho chooses the math people, you know? It's not, <laughs> it's not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, and that's, that's one of those things like, um, like my, my wife yells at me all the time because I don't care uh, about money. Um, you know, I care about experiences and time and like, um, d don't get me wrong. Like I, uh, I in invest and I try to help other people. One of the jobs that I've done in the Navy is a uh, command financial specialist. And so I, I like, I try to help, um, you know, sailors not make dumb financial decisions that I've made, you know, in my past, you know, because I, I think setting, setting yourself up for success in, in every way is important. Um, and, and, you know, should have, a a little priority to it right you know um but uh, like the day like i don't i don't ever care uh or wouldn't ever try to like be rich it, you know monetarily um like some people hunt that some people like strive to be that and um i i i don't I'm, i've just never been one of those people because i i think uh Oftentimes, money brings out the worst in people. Balance is important. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess yeah. we need it. But um, we have one minute left if you want to just say one more thing and close this out. Uh, say one thing. Um, Rock on. No, I'm just kidding. Right no, on, just yeah. close us out. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, okay, if I, if I had to say anything, it would be to... Um, if, if you want to do something, start small and do it consistently. Um, write down your goals. Like, it's super important because I, I'm, I'm ADD and I just assume everyone else is, right? So, like, write, write down your stuff so you, you, can, you can remember it um, and, and do it consistently. Work out consistently, whether that's five minutes of just, like, hey, jogging in place in your, in your room or, like, doing some planks. You know, your, your health will be better for the long run. If you want to pick up something, pick up a paintbrush and do some art, do some acting, do some music, do it. Like, um, there's, life is only running out, you know, and I, we only have the time that we have. Um, so, so seize it and, and be present uh, with where you are and who you're with. That's beautiful. Thank you, Chief. I, I wish you had more. I wish you had an hour more. You know, maybe when you hit 500, you could come back. Yeah, um, I'm well. I'm competing in uh, Maryland's Strongest Man in November, so maybe we could do something after that. <laughs> That's awesome! Congratulations! <laughs> in, no in November, we'll look out for it. Great. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe we'll do something after that, or uh, I don't know. We'll we'll figure something out. Either way, if you have a new song, that was a really good song you wrote. So, congratulations! <laughs> keep keep it moving, Chief. <laughs> we'll do. Thanks. I appreciate you. Blessings to you and your family. Thank you. And we'll talk soon. I'll see you soon. Good. Okay. Thanks, Chief. All right. Bye. Bye. I don't know how to turn this thing off. I, you got to I got you, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. He's the best. Thank you for joining. I see you. Thank you, Rodriguez Lopez, for the 
question. That was very kind. Um, Mario Tara Rosario. Rodriguez Lopez. Let's see if, oh, sure. Anyways, I can't I see a whole bunch of people. I love y'all. Thank you, Chief, for joining. You're the best. Very talented. Strong man. Um, next week, I don't know who we have, but tune in. Love y'all. Have a good week.